Hey, I'm Cameron McKenzie at CameronMCNZ on Twitter, and I wanted to talk to you about queues and UiPath, and specifically I wanted to show you how to create one, how to add something to it, and then finally read some data from that queue so you can actually see all of the information that's held in that queue item. So if you want to work with queues, the first thing you need to do is create a queue. And I'm here in orchestrator, cloud.uipath.com. You click on automations queue, and then you just click the plus button and name your queue. So I'll call it the insights queue. And then you can add a description if you really want. Um, do you want a unique reference? This will allow you to um, make sure that only specific requests go to this queue, specify your auto retry. But I just want to demonstrate the basics here. So I'm just going to create this very, very basic queue. So the queue has now been created. And then the question is, how do you actually write to that queue? Well, it really couldn't be easier. All you have to do is go into UI Path Studio and create a new orchestration process. Don't create a process, create an orchestration process because the default process won't work. And I'll call this add message to queue. That'll be the name of my project. I'll open the main window and I'm going to search over here for the add queue item and get reference. So I'll move this over here. Oh, I didn't do the connection, so let's connect these two up. That looks nice and handsome. And then over here, I just double click and I specify all of the different properties that I need. So I double click to open it up. There we go. And now it wants the queue name. And of course, the queue name just maps to insights queue. That needs to be in quotations. Normal priority, I'll give it high priority. And then you can have an expression to uh, save the output to. I'm not going to worry about that now, but I am going to worry about what I actually put into this queue. And you can see this collection here. You can code it in. So I could say, you know, email, and the value is mail at mcnz.com. And then we could have a priority. Actually, I don't want to say priority because that would confuse us with the queue priority. So I'll say status. And maybe this person is diamond status. And then maybe we could have, you know, interests. And then maybe their interest is UI path. And there we go. Let's take a look at that. I got one extra one there that'll just delete. Okay, now this looks handsome. So email, status, and interest. And so that's been set to the collection and I can just now save that and click the run button. It'll just take a moment to run. Notice that it started and it finished. And now with that completed, I can head over to UI path. There's my queue. I'm gonna take a look at that queue, view transactions. And you see that there's one new transaction here. That's the one that I just wrote. And if I take a look at the details on that, you notice that the email, the status, and the interest are all configured there. So diamond, UI path, mail at MCNZ, which is exactly what I configured here in the collection where it actually says collection. So I just click on this, and there you go. Email, status, interest. And so that's all been pushed up to the server. Now, how would you read that? Well, that's just done in a new UiPath Studio project. So I'm going to go home, I'm going to close this project, and I'm going to create a new orchestrator process, and I'm going to call it process queue items. And then when this starts up, I'm going to open the main window, and I'm going to look for the activity called get queue items. There it is right there. I'm going to drop it in. And this get queue items, it needs to know the queue name. And of course, that was insights queue. And that's just the name of the queue over here. Insights queue, no big mystery there. And when this get queue items runs, it wants to take all of the items in the queue and hold it into a variable. So I just highlight in the variable there and press Control K. A little set var comes up, which is going to allow it to set the appropriate type. And I'm just going to call this get Q items output. And I'm going to need that in a moment. So I'm going to just copy that as I create it. But that gets created. And then you can see down here in the variables, gets created. And it's a type I enumerable with a collection of Q items inside of it. 
And when you have a loop, it's a good idea to just loop through it. Or when you have a, an iterable object, it's a good idea to loop through it. So over here, I'm going to loop through that with a for each. I'm going to just go for each of the elements inside this queue. So I'll put it down there. We've got a for each. And I'm going to double click on this. And so for each item in, well, what was that? That was each item in the get queue items output. Click Control S there. What do I want to do? Well, maybe I'll just want to get the information that's in the queue. So how do you actually get details of that item? So we've got one item in the queue here. If we view transactions and then even take a look at this and view the details, you notice that we've got the status and the email. How do we actually pull those properties out? Well, inside the body of this for loop here, I'm just going to add a right message, much better than the left message, right line. And then in this right line, I'm just going to say, well, each Q item is, this is an item. So I'm going to say item dot specific content and just ask for the email. And of course, this is actually giving me a little warning here. And the reason for the warning is in that for each loop, you'll notice up here that the argument type is object. I actually want that argument type to be Q item because that's what's inside of that list. And there you go, right under UiPath core, Q item, click Control S, and then just verify down here that we've got the two string. And I'll just kind of take that, put it into Notepad. And there you go, you can actually see the whole content of that line there. So I'm going to click Control S here. I'm going to give this a little run. And you notice that as it runs, it's actually pulled that information out, mail at mcnz.com. So that's how easy it is to just pull data out of the queue. I can even copy that, copy that and paste it in, paste it in right there. And then of course the other fields that we've got is uh, status. So you know maybe just pull out status as well. And give it another run. You notice we've got diamond and mail at MCNZ. So that's how you actually pull out the fields inside of that queue. But notice that the object's still in the queue, right? So its status is new. How do you actually change the status and, and actually handle it so no one else is going to handle it, right? Once somebody's handled something in the queue, you don't want it handled again. Well, what you do there is you just get the transaction item. So we just look for the get transaction item activity over here. There it is, just pull it in. It's gonna ask for the name of the queue, and of course the queue, we can find that out right over here. It's the same one, hasn't changed. So it's the insights queue. Put that in quotes here, and then have an output for the transaction item. So where do we wanna store that variable? Again, Control K will allow us to highlight there, press Control K, allow us to set a variable, and just very boringly call it transaction item. Now that creates the variable that we need. You can see it down there. And now with the transaction item available to us, we can simply go over here and just say, hey, we want to change that transaction status. So set transaction status. Here we go. And then we would, what do we want to set the transaction status to? You can choose. I want to set mine to successful. And of course, it wants to know what transaction item we're talking about. And we're just talking about this one here, the transaction item I just created. And there you go. That now allows us to not only get the information out of the transaction, but actually get, get the information out of the queue, but also get the transaction item and then change the status on the object in the queue. So I'll click Control S there. Click Run. We get the information. Then we actually start a transaction, we end it, and then it seems like it processed the queue. So did it really? Well, let's go take a look at our queue. So over here, here's our insights queue. I'll take a look at it. So take a look at the transactions. And now you notice this transaction that previously was new has now been marked as successful.
And there you go. That's how you handle your transactions in UiPath Orchestrator. And there you go. That's how easy it is to read data from a queue and also perform a variety of other op other operations such as creating the queue and handling some queue based transactions. Now, if you enjoyed that tutorial, why don't you head over to the serverside.com. I'm the editor in chief over there. If you want to follow my personal antics, I'm at CameronMCNZ on Twitter and subscribe on YouTube.